In this section, we talk about secondary stakeholders, which are an important part of the modern esports industry. It is due to raised awareness towards esports that has attracted stakeholders from outside the esports industry. All the secondary stakeholders have entered to the industry for their own reasons, but the fundamental idea is the same, to make money in some way. The secondary stakeholders include governing bodies, sports organizations, sponsors, general public, and as their own separate group, investors, entrepreneurs, media, and shareholders. What can be said in general is that esports is lacking governance, and there are various entities trying to create a specific governance for the industry. For example, the Olympic Committee demands esports to have a governing organization. This is to enforce the rules and regulations of the Olympic movement. And it means that esports should adopt the structures and regulations of traditional sports. However, esports may not fit within these structures. And in esports, governance is understood in having an entity who has power and legitimacy to decide on the norms and regulations. Governance model mimicking from traditional sports can be even harmful to the industry. Governing body in esports should be something that focuses on creating a thriving environment for the industry, something that is traditionally seen in corporate governance. Ongoing creation of governing bodies and the governance is typical for emerging industries. The definition of esports is difficult, so that makes it hard to find the right method of governance. One approach could be a bottom-up corporate governance with all the stakeholders working together. Whether esports is sports or not does not affect the fact that more and more sports businesses invest in esports space. Sports businesses struggle to gain an international audience and sports market itself does not have the same growth potential as esports. Traditional sports audience is aging, meaning that the average audience age is increasing steadily due, steadily. due to this, it can be said that there are problems in reaching younger audience. Esports industry makes sense as the market is very global and there's a massive growth potential and younger audience to be reached. In 2018, there were more than 200 sports teams with esports representation in their organization, while the same number in 2015 was less than 10. There are multiple ways for sports organizations to engage in esports space. For example, a sports organization can buy a franchise team, they can do a joint ventures with existing esports teams, or acquire individual players for the digital version of sports they represent in. Next up, Sponsors. Sponsors are the driving force in esports, and sponsorship contributes to one third of the economy, according to the PVC in 2018. According to Superdata, in the same year, nearly 60% of revenues derive from sponsorships and advertising. Many business models in esports depend on some form of sponsorship, especially. In the beginning, there was no merchandise and there were a few means to monetize products and business. So um, the so-called endemic sponsors are more believable and have been in the industry for longer. But during recent years, more and more non-endemic sponsors have entered the field. Endemic sponsor is like, in, like Intel, a company that has been supporting esports for a long time, making CPUs. And whereas a non-endemic sponsor is like Coca-Cola, a more recent addition to the sponsor stakeholder group. In the esports industry, there is space for innovations, for example, in the form of branding opportunities for young and global audience. Key to winning the audience seems to be authenticity. From sponsors, we go to the next group, which is the general public. The general public influences the general perception of esports, and thus it has influence on businesses. The perception that video games are bad and unhealthy hinders the growth of esports, as they can be regarded dangerous for the general public. Video games are also regarded addictive, which relates to losing control over life, 
another bad thing. There have been some studies showing beneficial effects of video games, but still they do not outweigh the negatives in the minds of people. More precisely, if um, the image of video games is negative, it creates a challenge for esports to create profitable business models. When it comes to general public, the diversity issue also needs assessment. A lot of women play video games, yet appear underpresented in esports. In terms of general public, I feel like it is easy to agree and follow everyone else. It is more comfortable and easier to condemn video games and esports rather than finding out what they are and are they actually a bad thing. For the group consisting of investors, entrepreneurs, and media and shareholders, it is safe to say that focus of this group is in making profit out of esports. Money is flooding onto the esports with an eventual demand for the return on investment. In esports space, the valuations are inflated and highly speculative. Costs are higher than they should be, salaries are getting out of hand, but still it is believed that esports will be the next big thing. Media businesses can use esports as means to digitize their industry. Esports can learn a lot from traditional media and vice versa. Shareholders in esports are often unknown, but what they need to understand is that esports is a long-term investment, and there are no quick wins in this industry. 